Good afternoon, welcome back. I wanted to share with you this medieval journal that I just finished. Uh, and you're probably thinking, well, your last two videos had something to do with medieval jur uh, journals, and there is a reason for that. Uh, in November, I'm taking a very interesting class from John Campbell Folk School, and it's called Medieval Chained Books. Uh, John Frontini is the bookbinder. I've taken classes from him, and you may have heard me mention him in some Renaissance books that I did a couple of years ago. And then there's a metalwork jeweler, Tom Patterson, that's going to teach us how to make the chained books. And if you've not ever seen a chained library in real, um, you might want to take a brief look out of all things, the Marvel movie, Doctor Strange, because there's a uh, major scene uh, taking place inside a library that's all chained books. So it's, it's historical and then, it, you know, people reference it and do other things. This is a leather-bound journal. These are faux uh, bands here because it is sewn on, and I hope we can get this in, uh, in focus, sewn on a tube so that it is a hollow back, or it's sewn and then glued, a uh, tube is glued to the spine before it's bound so that you get a hollow back. And what happens with a hollow back is the pages can throw up better and lay flatter for journaling. Uh, if you've ever um, opened a tight bound book, um, you'll notice that you lose anywhere from an eighth to a quarter of an inch in the gutter of the book that you can't even see. And I opened it here to a center of a signature so that you can Notice that you can see all the way down to the stitching in uh, a uh, hollowback book. For the cover, I took some very thin chipboard and cut it to the size of the cover and then cut these parts out. I used this when I glued this piece and this piece to the cover of the book to hold that central part in place. And I also used it for measuring out and marking where I was going to put the studs. So if you do something like this, don't throw this piece away. It becomes very important. The other place that it's very important is <clears throat> when the leather is drying before the studs are put in. You put this down in the crevice with the weight on top and it helps to form that channel more completely. The other thing that helps it is if you have done leather binding, you, you put the leather on with paste, wheat paste, rice paste, whatever starchy paste you're gonna use. But in order for these little areas next to the cardboard or chipboard to, to adhere really well, I go around with a little thin brush and put PVA glue there and then bring the leather over and then as um, I'm putting the leather down I use the bone folder to go in those channels and really get that leather stuck to the sides of the chipboard so that you actually see them quite well. Now the reason I'm using this bone folder, if you don't have one and you have a real bone folder, you can uh, grind it down to this point. But this point is very useful in allowing you to get in that hollow when you're turning the leather in to push it all in and down. And so a real nice pointed uh, bone folder is kind of an important thing to have. The insides of this book, this is my marble paper. I think you've probably gotten the idea by now that that's another one of my hobbies. But all of these papers on the inside are from Medieval Mirage, but not just one kit. I liked, uh, I have made other books using the kits individually, but once you have them, you like to kind of mix them up. So I used all of these different kits and I'm going to lay this out here and then you can pause the video to read them all off um, but I'll have a link below the video 
that will tell you uh, the store on Etsy, uh, just so that you know that for sure. But you can see I have all of these kits, and I hope that's visible. And you can know that I got pages from all of these different ones. So just I'm going to kind of go through here pretty quick. Some of them are illuminated type pages. Some of them are just blanks because, as you know, I like to write in my journals. Um, some of them are very uh, artsy. Some of them are very plain. Uh, but I think it's just a nice mixture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, there's one of the more artful uh, collages. Uh, it's just fun to have a mixture of a lot of different imagery and it not all be too much same old, same old. Um, actually having all of those kits, I think there's only maybe three or four pages that are repeats in this whole thing, uh, except for the blank pages, but of the artistic kind of pages, I don't think there's really repeats. Like this is the other side of this in the signature. It's not like another of the exact same thing. But um, yeah, there's a lot of neat castle and medieval and kind of renaissance -y, um items in here. And what I hope to do is having made several journals, I hope to take them with me and get help from Mr. Patterson on some ideas for putting the chains on books that I've already made in addition to whatever book, one or two books, we're able to bind in the class because it's only a week-long class. And I can tell you that this book right here took me 10 days uh, because I work fairly slowly and try to be as meticulous as possible and like to do uh, things like sewing on my own end bands. Uh, this is a three color end band in case you didn't see that uh, of silk thread. But I like, I like to do all of it as much as possible has my hand in it. Um, someone on my last video commented that if I had done the, the digitals myself it would have been all me. And I tell you I have done my own digitals but Sometimes you just find somebody like Jarf who uh, has medieval mirage that does, does such an elegant job. It's like, why reinvent the wheel? She's done the work. Why not just let that part be something that you can just copy out and enjoy and not have to repeat? So that's my medieval journal. I hope you enjoyed the tips that I gave you and that you continue to grow in your own bookbinding adventure. See you next time.